This is the Fire Maple Hornet 2 Titanium Butane Stove. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this tiny, lightweight stove, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending out the Hornet 2 so that I could share it with you. So I have been using this for a while out on the trail, especially because we have had a fire ban most of the summer. So it gave me lots of opportunity to try it out and I'm ready to share my thoughts on it. So what I thought we would do is just go down to the tabletop. There's not a whole lot to say in terms of specifications, but of course I will give you those. I'll show you how it is assembled it's very simple of course i've got another little gas stove that i want to compare it with i'll put the two of them on top of canisters we'll do some flame comparisons and then i'll give you my thoughts on it all right so i put the stove back in its small protective carrying case nice hard plastic sided thing whether you choose to use it or not it's nice to have now when the stove is stored uh, the um, pot stands themselves slide down the body of the stove so that it makes it a more compact so i'll just show you now how to set it up first i'd fold the the uh, adjuster on and or and just lay it down so raise them up but as you do open them up a little bit but not all the way and uh, see if i can get in and give you a close-up on the hair right there you can see tiny little notches and those notches will mate up with the notch on the bottom of the pot rests so when you get it to the top turn it then you can extend the pot rests out the rest of the way. I know it sounds like an extra step to do to get it assembled, but what it does is it makes for a very strong, very stable platform once it's assembled like that. But it is a little bit taller, so uh, you have to be aware of it. But it does create the perfect pot gap in all reality from top of the burner itself. So let me give you a few close-ups of it. So it's not entirely made of titanium, and I don't think any of the stoves are, but most of the components are. So we have the pot rests themselves and the burner are all made of titanium. The rest is either made of a bit of stainless steel, a bit of aluminum, and a bit of copper, of course, or brass for some of the mechanisms. But overall, the majority of it is titanium. And uh, well, let me just give you a few uh, specifications on it. So this stove, now this is without the case, but the stove itself comes in at 48 grams or 1.7 ounces. So Look at the size of that. For a 1.7 ounce stove, that's pretty light. So it gives you an idea just how much titanium is involved here. Unfold it like this. You're going to get a span of 4.8 inches and a height of 3.2 inches, which is 122 by 82 millimeters. And fold it down. It folds down much smaller, of course. You get down to... Uh, two inches by 3.1 inches, which is 50 by 80 millimeters. Now, as far as the rated power for the stove, it's very reasonable considering the small, the size of it. It has a rating of uh, 8,531 BTUs, or it can be expressed another way uh, as 2.5 kilowatts of power. Now, I wanted to show this to you, but I also wanted to compare it with another tiny stove, which has long time been the standard for ultralight hikers or people looking for the smallest, lightest gear. And that's the little micro stoves. Now this one is from Boulin. And I've had this for quite a while. And you can see that they look similar, but the Boulin is much smaller in size. And I also want to point out right now, a look at the top of the burners themselves. They have similarities but they have differences and the difference being the uh, hornet has a bigger burner top on it and as you'll see when we see the flame pattern it's a bit more diffuse a bit more wider spread on the flame pattern which in my mind leads to less of a chance of a hot spot on the bottom of your pot or pan or whatever it is you're using that's always been one of the criticisms of the boulin and any of the other stoves of this design is that they are really hot really fast, but they can burn food really quickly because of the hot spot they create. So the people tend to use them only for boiling water, for things like the instant meals. Rarely do people use these for frying with or trying to simmer with. Now, both of them have good flame adjustment, and I'll show you that as well. Take it down and turn it back up again. But it's as an alternative, as you'll see, I prefer the Hornet 2 because it's, well, there's a number of reasons, but the flame pattern is just that much better. Now, just before I give you any more of a demonstration with this, I just want to do what I came up with for boil times. 
And it's probably worth knowing this as well. I had mentioned that the Hornet 2 from Fire Maple came in at 48 grams. Well, my Boleyn comes in at 45. Barely a difference between the two of them. It's, it's incredible how close they are in weight. So this is much larger, but only three grams heavier. That's that's pretty pretty light when you, and impressive. All right, so I did some uh, boil tests with both of these stoves using exactly the same pot in the same conditions, which is the room I'm in right now in my basement at home. I used two cups of cold tap water, 500 milliliters, and for the Hornet, I got a boil time of two minutes, 33 seconds and you know, six grams of fuel consumed. And that's more important, I think, is just how much fuel is consumed because it's not just the weight you're carrying in the stove, it's the weight of the gas or the butane that you're carrying with you when you go out as well. So you want to use as little as possible uh, at the most efficient stove that you can carry. So this one, six grams of fuel, boil time, two minutes, 33 seconds. And I will say also, this was not running at full blast because I've learned that you get your best performance somewhere between half and three quarters opening of the valve. So I just want to point that out as well. Now, when I did the same test with the Boolin Micro, same amount of water, two cups, 500 milliliters, I got a boil time in three minutes and 29 seconds. I, I was actually very surprised by that because that's almost a minute longer than it was with the fire maple. Not only that, it burned eight grams of fuel. So it took longer to bring the water to a boil and it consumed two more grams of fuel. Now, I can only say that about the Boolin, the one I have. I, I don't have any of the other makers of this stove and the, there are a number of brands on this stove, but Boolin being one of the more well-known ones. But the performance that this gave me was less than the performance this one gave me. This was faster, consumed less fuel, slower, consume more fuel. Hard to believe, but that was my results. Okay, I also want to share this about the two of them. Let me start with the Boleyn. So it is a small stove, no question about it. These wings fold out and they're not bad at supp supporting small pots. The issue has often been, or the complaint has often been, is that when you use something of a very large diameter, then it gets a little tippy because the actual support area is relatively small. Now I'm going to show you the pot I use for both of those tests. This is the fiber, uh, excuse me, Fire Maple Frost 900 milliliter pot. Uh, it's an anodized aluminum pot, quite like this, and I have a review on this as well, but it, it was a good pot to uh, match up with the two of these. As you can see, it sits on the bottom of, or the, uh, how should I say it, the Boolin, the coverage that it provides to the bottom of this pot, which is just over um, 10 centimeters, so it's not much over 10 centimeters, but I think it's 10.1 uh, centimeters. In fact, I, I'll put that in the specs if that's important to you, or and of course I'll link it, my review of it in the video as well. So you can see that, but if the pot was larger, it starts to get to a point where you have to be careful that you don't accidentally tip it off because of the uh, weight over one side or the other. Now, let me just bring in the other stove. And again, I'll just show you by comparison. You can see just how much wider the Hornet 2 from Fire Maple is in terms of its uh, pot rests. That means you can use a larger pot with less risk of it tipping over the side, but still, you can use this with small pots. So once again, let me show you on this one. Now you can see that it's actually wider than the bottom of this pot, yet there is still plenty of contact, so you're not gonna have this fall off. It's not too small by any means. You can go to a smaller pot, something probably down in the 450 milliliter size, certainly the more common 750 milliliter size, which are usually right around 10 centimeters or maybe a little bit under, but you can get a smaller pot on this and you can go to a larger pot. So my mind, this gives me more versatility in the types of pots I will use. All right, I guess what I'll do now is I'll set the two of these up on butane canisters, light them up, and we can take a look at the flame patterns. All right, I've turned off all the lights except one, which I'll turn off after I get both of these stoves lit. So it's worth pointing out as well that neither of these stoves have a piezoelectric lighter, so you're gonna to have to provide your own light to it. So let me turn on the Boolin first. 
Oh, before I do, it's, it's worth noting. These are both noisy stoves. I think the Bulin is a little bit noisier than the Hornet, but it really doesn't matter. They're both kind of noisy and they sound like small jet engines. So I didn't want to have to talk over them once we got the test started. Now let me turn them on. All right, that's turned down quite low. All right, let me open the Bulin up all the way. Right, I think you can probably hear me over the two stoves now. I've got them down almost as low as I can go. I may be able to get them a little bit lower. And there's a couple of observations I want to make. As I turn the Bulin down, you can see the flame turn from that bright, clean burning blue flame to a yellow flame. And that means there's a mismatch in the oxygenation of the flame through the stove itself. So I would say what that indicates is this stove works at its most efficient as you turn the flame up. Now watch, it'll turn back to a, a nice clean blue flame. And I'll turn it back down. Whereas if you look at the fire maple, it's clean blue burning all the way down. And from my vantage point, it it's also got a turbo effect that I don't see on the Bulin. There's actually a spiral in the flame. I don't think I'll be able to show that with it. Let me turn it down completely as far down as I can get it. See how far I can get it before I lose it. That's pretty low. I think you can probably do some good simmering with that. Whereas now this looks like the Bulin looks like a candle flame and gone. And I think I may be able to get the fire maple down even a little bit further. All right, I am impressed with that. All right, let's turn it right down and out. Okay, I'll turn the lights up and I'll close this video with a few more comments. All right, I, I haven't removed the stove from the butane canister only because it's still a little bit too hot to do so, but I just wanted to give you a few more comments on the use of the Hornet 2 from Fire Maple. So the first thing I'm gonna say is, make sure you have a windscreen. And uh, it, well, that's true of any stove because the uh, you get much more efficiency when you have a windscreen, you've got less heat being robbed by any cross breezes, but it can be a little bit exaggerated with this stove because it's so exposed right here. Any cross breezes will drag away some of the, the, the heat from it. Now, having said that, it's still a very stable flame, but you can see it being pushed away from the bottom of your pot. So a windscreen will go a long ways to improving the performance of this stove or any stove, including the Boolean. It really doesn't make any difference. But I, I find that exposed stoves like, stoves like this do need a windscreen for maximum performance. The other comment I'm gonna have is these are probably a little bit more expensive. I say probably because it depends on where you're gonna buy your Boolean or its uh, brand name counterparts. Then, so they're a little bit more expensive but the quality is definitely much improved over the smaller micro stove. I think this is a worthy heir to the micro stove. I think its time has come and gone. And for the slight increase of expense and really marginal uh, increase in weight and a little bit bigger in size, you get a huge jump in performance over the two stoves. And I think that was obvious in the flame patterns between the two, as well as the boil tests I gave you on both stoves, uh, stoves comparison side by side. Okay, I, I wanted to keep this simple. What I'll do, of course, is I'll give you all the information that I just gave you, including the links to where you can purchase it. I'll put that all in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.